May the poor of the great white spirit bless you all. Let us follow our usual procedure and put on one side any thought of trouble, difficulty, fear, or anxiety. Let us try to achieve the closest possible harmony with one another so that we become one in our desire to aspire to the highest that we can reach. And none and nothing can be higher than the great white spirit, the infinite poor of divine love and wisdom, which is responsible for the boundless universe in which we live and whose intelligence has devised and sustains all the natural laws that control and regulate every facet of being, whether mighty or minute, complex or simple, all operate according to inexorable laws that know no possible exception. We pay tribute to this supreme poor which has revealed some of its wondrous truths that have extended the boundaries of our minds and given us a greater comprehension of who and what we are and a clearer picture of the supreme poor that broodeth through all and reigneth over all. And in this wondrous scheme, nothing and nobody can be overlooked, forgotten, and or neglected. Care has been taken to sustain and provide every facet of being, no matter where it may be. We recognize, too, that we have behind us all the time the mighty hosts of liberated beings whose one desire is to serve us so that we in turn may serve others less fortunate than we are. Because we have been helped and comforted and guided, let us always resolve that we may unfold whatever gifts have been bestowed on us so that we can give solace to the bereaved, healing to the sick, guidance to the perplexed, strength to the weary, 
direction to all those who have lost their way and provide the radiant illumination of truth in the darkness that engulfs them. This is the prayer of the Indian servant who seeks always to serve. <clears throat> I am very happy to come amongst you and to bring my love and greeting from the world of spirit. I am aware of the special purpose of our gathering tonight, and so I thought it might be helpful if I would try to explain to those who will hear these words the purpose behind my mission and those of my colleagues who are animated by the same desire. To the uninitiated, I would say, I am a human being like yourselves. I have lived much longer than any of you who are listening to what I say. And as a result of my experiences in realms far beyond your earth, I have gained some knowledge of the great spirit that you call good uh, and of the natural laws which have been devised to ensure that the will of the great spirit will and must ultimately prevail. What I have learned as a result of my experiences, I am willing to share with those who are ready to receive them because I think they may be of helpfulness to them. I am not in any way a deity. I am still very human, capable of error, weakness, and imperfection. I have, like every one of you, a long, long way to go on the road to perfection. It is an infinite one. But, like others in my world, I was asked to retrace my steps so that I could offer some of the truth, the wisdom, the knowledge that we have gained and share it with you. At the same time, we would be able, with the aid of those who cooperate with us, to make available the supreme poor of the spirit, which is responsible 
for all life, despite its multitudinous forms, so that this poor can stream through gifted individuals and serve its benign purpose. In olden days, when this poor flowed, it performed certain remarkable phenomena which many today regard as miracles. I want to say that in the operation of natural law they cannot be suspended or abrogated and must fulfill themselves in an ordered sequence as effect follows cause. Whatever has happened, however remarkable, stupefying, extraordinary, or wonderful, in days gone by, it was due to the operation of natural laws. These operate not only in the physical domain, but also work ceaselessly in the spiritual realms. And when conditions allow, the spiritual, psychic, astral, and etheric laws can be brought into operation to perform what were regarded as miracles yesterday, but today are described as psychic phenomena produced through mediumship. No, a medium is one on whom there has been bestowed the gifts of the spirit which are ably described by the Apostle Paul in your Bible. These gifts are divinely bestowed and their recipients as they unfold them are able to be used as channels for the divine beneficence to flow through them. All the phenomena of mediumship are due to the operation of spirit poor. So that today you are witnessing exactly the same kind of manifestations that occurred in lands which were called holy and regarded as sacred. The Great Spirit does not change. The natural laws 
do not alter. They are in operation now by virtue of the fact that I, who once inhabited your world, am able to speak to you through a medium by utilizing the power of the Spirit. I want to explain also that we are part of a vast spirit organization and we are pursuing what I would like to describe as the overall master plan which is designed to ensure that the power of the Spirit will continue to express itself in your world and reach an ever-increasing number of people to drive away their ignorance, error, and superstition, and to bring them into the radiant light of divine truth and knowledge, so that they can begin to live and fulfill themselves as they should according to the purpose of their earthly incarnation. The poor of the Spirit has constantly flowed into your world. From time immemorial. Its descent, however, was only temporary and sporadic. The wonders that were worked, the signs that were given, the same truths that were pronounced were each time made available to the people of that day. Then there was decay, there was tampering with the knowledge that had been revealed for political, theological, and sometimes state purposes. Now, however, the poor of the Spirit, because of the overall plan to which I have referred is here to stay in your world. Why? Because it is vitally necessary to do so. So many systems have failed to provide the direction which will enable the people who dwell on earth to find themselves and to live according to ideals that will enable the divinity which gave them life to express itself. 
the spirit has to be made prominent in the lives of all who dwell on earth. It is a very dark world in which you live. It is full of turbulence, violence, greed, <coughs> envy. Mammon is being worshipped instead of the great spirit. False idols are still the ones which are the subject of adoration. The evidence that is available to you will, if you are reasonable, convince you that life, because it is spiritual in essence, cannot end when death comes to the physical body. Matter is only the husk. The spirit is the reality. Matter exists only because spirit animates it. When spirit, the life force, withdraws, matter crumbles into dust. But the spirit, which is the individual, does not crumble into dust. The spirit is immortal. It cannot die. Death is its second birth. Its first came when it was born into your world and began to manifest through a physical body. The second birth comes when the spirit says farewell to the physical body and continues in unbroken sequence its eternal path on the road of infinite progress. You cannot die. Life is deathless. So there is the evidence that you, an individual, immortal spirit, will continue after the death of your body. And everything that constitutes your individuality will persist. You will have consciousness, awareness, memory, poet reason and to express love for love is an aspect of the great spirit love in its highest form is divine and love too like life is deathless Why do we come back to you? It would be easy to say farewell forever to earth with all its heartaches, its problems, its sufferings, its trials, its difficulties. But we love you. And there are others who are bound to you by ties of love, just as strong. The marriage service performed in your churches 
refers to the existence of the marriage until death puts the man and his wife. If spiritually they are not united, they are parted before death comes. If there is love, there is nothing that will ever separate them. Love is a mighty force in the universe. It is love that is expressed by all the advanced beings in our world whose only desire is to serve you. We seek nothing for ourselves. We require no worship, no adoration, no gratitude. If we succeed in helping, all we ask is that you express your thanks to the Great Spirit and because of what you have received, try to serve others. The greed of your world must be replaced by love because love is an expression of the spirit. Love has many aspects, compassion, service, friendship, cooperation. You are all parts of one another whoever you are and wherever you may be. Color, class, nationality, language. These constitute only physical differences. Spiritually, you are all members of one another. You make up the vast human spiritual family because the common link of the spirit binds you all to one another with a tie that cannot be broken just as it binds you all to the great spirit The spirit that unites you is stronger than any of the physical differences that separate you from one another. You have to allow that spirit to express itself to its fullest capacity. You must learn self-regeneration. You must forget self insofar as being materialistic in desire is concerned. This is not to say that you should overlook what are your physical needs that must sustain the body which is the temple of the spirit. Equally, however, you must tend and care for all the attributes of the spirit, which is the eternal you. You must allow the divinity within you to attain its fullest expression. so that you practice the brotherhood and sisterhood which is a natural fact of your being.
The soul is not white, yellow, black, or red. The soul has no color or racial bar. This is what you have to learn and to practice. Superiority comes only when you unfold the divinity within you and it expresses itself in love and compassion and consideration not only for all the other humans in your world, but for the animals who share this planet with you. You must abolish needless cruelty and exploitation everywhere. Peace will come when you put into practice the facts that appertain to your spiritual origin and destiny. In everything I say, I am governed only by the desire to be helpful, to bring some understanding, some knowledge, some truth, some wisdom into your lives. It is possible that the principles which we enunciate may be contrary to certain theological ideas and of doctrines and dogmas and creeds on which you have been nurtured from childhood days. Our appeal is directed to your reason. If there is anything we say or do that insults your intelligence or makes your reason revolt, do not accept it. We desire to win your reason, your intelligence, so that you may cooperate with us and be instruments in the great, of the Great Spirit in ensuring that the divine will must prevail and you will help to speed the coming of peace in your world. As you learn to fulfill yourselves, you will Obtain as a result a richness, a radiance, a steadfastness, a resolution, an awareness, and an inner peace because you will be in harmony with the laws that the Great Spirit devised and even with the Great Spirit a portion of whose divinity is within each one of you. And may the Great Spirit bless you all. <laughs> Son, I, I have finished what I have prepared. Can you hear me? Yes. So if you want to ask me any question, I hope that is all right for you. Yes, yes, very good. Yes. If you want to ask me any questions, I will do my best to answer them. Well, there is one question which many of my friends have asked me, and uh, there does appear to be a lot of confusion about, and that is this matter of when a person dies. In, in the press and um, television recently, there have been a lot of controversy among doctors and lawyers about when a person 
is really dead. Some say when the heart stops, a person is dead. Others when the, the brain is exhausted. When do you consider a person should be regarded as dead? To the planet Earth, you know, to the, in the physical body. Yes. <clears throat> as you know, you have the spirit which is the divine essence that enables you to live. You have a physical body that exists only because it is animated by the spirit. As I have already said, when the spirit finally withdraws, and I stress finally, because temporarily it does so when you sleep, but returns when you wake. When the spirit finally withdraws, death comes to the physical body because the animation has gone. Now those who have what you call clairvoyance will see that the parting is finally accomplished when the code connecting the spirit body to the physical one after being extended as the spirit body gradually moves away is cut. When that severance takes place, death occurs and there is nothing and nobody in your world who can by any means enable that physical body to live again. But this problem has arisen because of the uh, new technology in removing organs. Now uh, doctors are waiting for people to die in order that they can take hearts out and kidneys out and so forth. So therefore the question of, of is the person dead, am I at liberty to take the organ out? That is the real problem which is vexing uh, doctors. I, I know about transplants and I am aware that the motive is often a very good one. But I must say that I am opposed to transplanting any parts of the human body to other people. There is nothing to fear in death. Death is the great liberator. Death brings freedom. You rejoice when babies come into your world. There are many who cry in our world when babies are about to be born into your world. And similarly, there is weeping when people die in your world, but there is rejoicing in ours, for death means that the earth has served its purpose, or should have done, and the spirit is ready to enjoy all the tremendous richness and beauty that the spirit life has to offer. Another question which is puzzling a lot of people is the treatment of um, the body after death. Some people seem to believe it is necessary to leave the body in a state of peace for a given amount of time before it is interfered with. 
And these people are worrying because of the present day tendency to whisk people into laboratories and open them up almost as soon as they have died for experimental or, or tutorial purposes to students. Do you think it is in any way harmful to the soul or the spirit if the body is interfered with so soon after death? It depends on whether the individual has any knowledge of spiritual matters. Uh, if there is ignorance, there can be temporary harm affected to the soul. Because even when the cord connecting the physical and spirit bodies are, is cut, there is still a certain amount of interplay uh, due to the long association of the two forms of being. Generally, it is considered advisable where there is complete ignorance of spiritual truths for an interval of three days to elapse before there is either burial or cremation. What happens after that is unimportant. If people wish to give their bodies to help knowledge for purposes which can be of service to others, that is a matter for them to decide. But let me also say this. There is a time to be born and there is a time for you to die. If that time to die is reached, then transplants will not succeed in maintaining you in your world. That leads one to the other problem of accidents. You get 120 people board a plane and uh, a quarter of an hour later the plane blows up and 120 people die instantly. What kind of effect does this have uh, on their souls or spirits? Exactly the same as I have already said, son. Those who have knowledge of spiritual realities will not be affected. Those who have not will be because of the shock. But in the process of time, awareness and the realization will come. Does a, an accidental death predispose one to an earlier reincarnation if one dies prematurely or just through accident? I'm not happy about the use of the word accident, son. <clears throat> because I know only of cause and effect in operation. Whatever is regarded as, an ex as accidental can be due only to the operation of the law of cause and effect. As to the question of reincarnation, that is a much more complex matter which would require far more time than I have at the moment to answer satisfactorily. Finally, um, I was recently reading some works by Rudolf Steiner and he talks about reading to the dead. Have you got any guidance to give regarding the worthwhileness or otherwise of reading to the dead? What do you mean by the dead? The people who have passed out of their physical bodies into the spirit world. Oh, I see. I thought you meant reading to dead bodies in your world. No. 
I fail to see what could be achieved by that. Well, I understand that various disciples spend quite a bit of time each day reading to, to various uh, relatives who have passed on, thinking that the relatives actually benefit from it. It does no harm, I doubt if it does much good. <clears throat> there is in our world ample facilities for all to obtain knowledge when they are ready to receive it. If they are not ready to receive it, then they cannot obtain it. <clears throat> Whether it, uh, it is attempted in your world or ours makes no difference. You know, son, it is only... When the pupil is ready, that the teacher can arrive. Yes, indeed. And finally, about healing in the etheric body. Um, all orthodox doctors treat only the physical body, but some societies uh, try to concentrate on healing the etheric body. Is that a possibility, a practical possibility? All true spiritual healing works in a very simple fashion. <clears throat> you are a spirit with a body and not a body with a spirit. <clears throat> when your body is ill or diseased, and suffers as a result. It is due to the simple fact that harmony, wholeness, which ensures health, no longer obtains. Not only are you spirit and body, you are also mind, the means through which the spirit registers itself and allows the body to function. Now, in spiritual healing, the power of the spirit which emanates from its divine source is transmitted to a healer who has the gift of healing, which is a spiritual one. And through him, the power is directed to the spirit of the sufferer. It can be described very simply as from spirit, through spirit, to spirit. The whole exercise is a spiritual one. The spirit being the life force will try to produce harmony where there was disharmony some blockage, some interference, which means that the three aspects of mind, spirit and body are not working efficiently. When it succeeds, then wholeness, which is health, is restored to the patient. Now, whether this is done through the etheric, the spirit, the astral body or not, is a matter only of technique. What must happen is that the power of the spirit should recharge the spirit of the patient so that it can attain its true potential and enable harmony to be restored. Thank you very much indeed, Sir Robert. No more questions. Are there? Good.
like to give my love to all my friends, many of whom I have not met, and I would like them to know that I appreciate the love and affection that come to me from them and make it possible for me to work in your world. It is not an easy task. It is a wonderful challenge which I have accepted. Your world is cold. It is drear. It is dismal. It is dark. But here and there throughout your earth we find Places where there are the human hearths of love, affection, and friendship, where we can warm ourselves and enjoy the radiance that is offered by these lighthouses of the Spirit in your world. And for others who are newcomers, I say, pray for guidance, pray for knowledge, pray for truth, and it will come to you, for it has been said truly, Ask and ye shall receive, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And may the blessing of the Great Spirit always be with you. And may the blessing of the Great Spirit may be with you always too. Mm -hmm.